if this is how the innovation journey unfolds, how you, would you, as a manager, guide the process? What would guide this journey? We're studying the development of a new innovation. And because it's an innovative, it's not programmed. It is a novel venture. There is ambiguity, there is uncertainty. How do you manage the process of development under conditions of uncertainty? And so we went and dressed it in terms of, well, let's look at learning, let's look at leadership, and let's look at building these relationships. In terms of learning, a basic behavioral theory of learning would suggest that these two timelines, timelines of actions and a heavier one's outcomes, are going to be superimposed. People should do more of what leads to success and less of what leads to failure. But look what's happening here. From 1980, when the SIP, the Cochlear Implant Program, was formed, to 1985, we see that the acts, they continue to do more of what was apparently leading to failure. And finally, at this point, uh, where they had a market recall, did you find that actions and outcomes began to be superimposed, reflecting a behavioral model of learning? And Doug Polly and I and others, with Raghu, wrote articles showing this. The lack of learning in the beginning of innovation and the learning finally at the end. And you come back to this and you say, my goodness, let's reflect upon this. 